Hello and welcome to the Kent Voices podcast with me, your host, Charlie Gurr. In this episode, we'll be speaking to the Kent Union officers to find out more about them and what they've got planned for this year. So without further ado, let's get on with the podcast. Would you all like to introduce yourselves? Hi everyone, uh, my name is Zed, so I'm the current Student Union President for Kent Union. Hello everyone, I'm Lupe, I'm Vice President Academic Experience at Kent Union, and I'm also the Lead Medway Officer as well. I'm Carolina, I'm Vice President of Student Engagement, so in my role I look after sports clubs, societies, community action groups, and also a little bit of employability. So anything extracurricular is kind of what I'm all about. Hello, I'm Tom, and I'm Vice President Welfare and Community here at Kent Union. And uh, I'm Ben, uh, I'm the Vice President of Postgraduate Experience um, at Kent Union, so generally look out for postgrads, but I also dabble with Carol's a little bit in job opportunities. Great, so now we know a bit more about each of you, um, do you want to let us know what some of your priorities are for the year ahead? Yeah, so we have quite a few priorities that are voted on by students. Um, So alongside the election, students voted on these priorities and they were kind of separated out and then we had a discussion as a team on which ones we're going to be taking the lead on. So obviously some fall under specific roles remits, uh, but some are more on how we want to tackle them as individuals as well and as the team. So I'll start off with my priorities this year. Uh, which are to do with transparency in decision making, which has been a constant one for the past few years. But it very much involves around making sure that we as a union are as transparent as possible to the students in what we do, what we do as an officer team and the meetings we go to and how we're implementing change, but also transparency from the university. So really challenging the university to be um, open and honest about the decisions that they make things like relation to strikes or to the goodwill payments and things like those, being transparent and open about how those processes have gone through and what the outcomes are is really important because students want to feel involved. They want to feel like they know what's going on, um, especially when you're paying so much money to be at university. You know, you have, you're we're trying to create this collaborative partnership with students. So that's kind of a big one. Uh, another one for me is student feedback and involvement. So really, trying to ensure we're closing that feedback loop and really getting as much student feedback as we possibly can because every decision that we make as a student's union needs to be student-led and needs to be student-informed. We aren't doing anything just of our own personal volition. You know, even these priorities were voted on by students. It's a very democratic process. Um, We are here to represent students at the highest level at the university. And then finally, the big one that me and Tom are go- actually taking a joint lead on and really um, is something that we as an officer team as a whole are focusing on is the cost of living. Um, now the cost of living crisis is worsening day by day. It's, you know, it's on the minds of everyone, uh, regardless of your political affiliation, your background, wherever you're from, the cost of living crisis affects you. Um, so what we are doing as a team is at a local level right you know, on the ground at Kent, but also at a national level. So the things that I'm focusing on are lobbying the government, lobbying our ministers, uh, our MPs, to really provide a student uh, support package, to provide answers on what they're doing for students and how they're representing students at government level. Um, And also for them to review student finance, for them to review processes behind um, how students come to university and how we access higher education. It's really important that the cost of living crisis isn't just boiled down to, um, you know, how we eat or how we uh, can afford rent, but it also comes down to how are we financing. It's really important to see the distinction um, in the past few years, how student finance hasn't been adjusted for inflation. So students now, the money that they're getting, it's a home student specifically, the money that they're getting isn't worth the same as what they were getting four years ago before the pandemic. But they haven't been adjusted. So why is that? Why haven't they been following the inflation rate? There's a lot of technical stuff, but I'm working alongside all the Southern unions in the South of England um, as a collaborative approach to lobby the government. So it's not just at Kent, it's we're creating a coalition to really tackle that issue at its core. Um, I'll let Tom talk about the stuff that we're doing at Kent as well later on. Um, I did also want to add, as a whole officer team, we are working massively on a priority, which is community and belonging. Really 
creating and fostering that community at Kent and making sure that everyone who comes to Kent feels like they belong regardless of their background, um, regardless of their gender, their sexuality, their religion, their ethnicity, anything, you know, wherever you come from, you have a place here at Kent and we as officer team represent that through and through. And we want to make sure we create that environment here at the uni that allows you to grow and allows you to develop and allows you to expand your horizons and meet new people. I'll pass it on to Lupe to talk about her priorities. Thank you. So the priorities that students voted for for academic stuff this year um, goes around teaching quality and also um, deadlines and workload as well. So when it comes to teaching quality, of course, one of the biggest things last year uh, that people were concerned about was strikes um, and that's something that might happen again this year so uh, we're going to continue trying to get students involved with our democratic processes make sure that we're really representing the student voice when it comes to industrial action at our university um, and ensuring that students are appropriately mitigated for um, as well as really well educated on the topics and the issues that are going on both locally but also nationally um, we also will be working really closely with student reps again this year, but I want to make some improvements, particularly when it comes to getting the word out about what student reps are, really getting that big rep network established um, and really build up the academic community as well. I think that that's a really important point of being at university at the end of the day. We're all here to get an education um, and the best that it can be, um, the better. So student reps are there to create the amazing change that other students want to see. Um, and I really want to make sure that we are rewarding them and giving them a lot of opportunities to socialize and to do a lot of fun things. Um, because a lot of the times academic stuff can be a little bit boring. If I do say so myself, it's all I do. Um, so we really need to make sure that we're pumping in the fun as much as we can, wherever we can. Um, and then when it comes to deadlines and workloads, I've been working this past year around authentic assessments, uh, doing quite a lot of research, and that's something that I will be continuing doing this year as well, um, particularly the university is working on revising the assessment and feedback um, strategy uh, to see kind of what's the new direction for the university and we know that authentic assessments are those assessments that really allow students to gain real life experience to learn um, and use their skills in real life context as well as helping to mitigate for um, academic misconduct which since COVID has gone up quite a lot um, and we understand students are disengaged essays are boring uh, and we'd rather be assessed in different ways so I'm really trying to work hard to make sure that we're getting more interesting assessments things that reflect the real world and that give us those skills that we need for when we leave Kent um, and also another really interesting thing that we've been working on from last year is a uh, late submission sliding scale penalty so you might know at the moment at Kent we get penalized with a mark of zero if we submit a minute late after the deadline, if we don't have any mitigating circumstances or we don't have um, any kind of medical certificates and stuff like that. Whereas in a lot of other universities, people have a sliding scale, so you have a bit more leverage. Um, and what it basically means is that, for example, if you submit a day late, you can um, just lose a percentage of your marks as opposed to just getting a direct zero. Um, so I'm really trying to push that forward and make sure that that gets put into action. Um, it's a really exciting project and I think it's really going to help with, um, you know, everything that students are going through at the moment. Sometimes mental health issues get in the way. Sometimes our part-time jobs, our, scare, our care and responsibilities get in the way. Um, and it's really about having some autonomy when it comes to our assessments um, and being able to make decisions for ourselves. Um, and then another thing that I'm be, I'll be working on as well is um, really promoting ILPs and promoting Kent inclusive practices, which is something that not a lot of people know about, uh, but they are all these inclusive practices that academics can do to make sure that our um, education is accessible to as many people as possible, that it's safe, that it's comfortable, and that it serves its purpose. So I'll be working as well to make sure that that is embedded throughout the um, experience of students at Kent. And I think, um, most importantly is about embedding well-being in the curriculum and making sure that when it comes to deadlines and workloads uh, we are not sacrificing our mental health or our health in general um, to get our education. 
Um, and then one more thing that I'll be focusing on this year, which I'm really, really excited about, and I'll be working on it with Tom, is uh, the Black Student Voices Project, which will be launching in October, right for his, uh, Black History Month. And this is a year long piece of research that we're doing into the experience of black students at our university, um, both academic experience so really making sure that we're working on our priority of decolonizing the curriculum, but also the wider experience in general of black students. Um, when it comes to socializing when it comes to job opportunities um, and when it comes to just being an existent on campus and what we can do for them, uh, both from the students union, but also from the university, what do we need to change and what do we need to put in place to make sure uh, that we're truly being, um, you know, equal in the opportunities that we're providing our students and that making sure that everyone has equal outcomes by the time they leave Kent and during the time at Kent as well. There's also some Medway stuff around social spaces and more representation as well, which I'm really excited about. Um, and yeah, watch that space. Wow. <laughs> Lupe does so much stuff. Um, let's see if I can, I can compare. Um, so like I said, the stuff that my job entails is student groups, student activities, and then also the employability aspect. So basically all of the extracurriculars. And for my job role, um, the priorities that students voted on were um, job opportunities um, and development and events for all. And like Zed said, we're also working a lot on community and belonging as a team, as well as cost of living. So in these categories is where I've kind of put some of my big projects. So starting with cost of living, one of the things that I'll be working on this year is a review of the current gym membership at Kent Sport, um, making it more flexible for students because we found that in the past few months, the first thing that students tend to drop when money gets tight is their extracurriculars. And we're really trying to make sure that's not gonna be a problem this year um, and that students can continue to actually have a good time besides their studies. Um, I'm not sure about any of you, but that's one of the things I enjoyed most about being at university. And I really want to see students continuing to thrive in their activities. Um, and alongside of that, I've also taken leadership on a project called Access to Activities Fund. So this is funding that we've had available for the past few years um, that students can apply for if they need a little bit of help covering some of these costs associated with joining a club or society. Um, and the gym. So we're looking to increase this pot of funding, um, offer students more funding kind of in line with inflation at the minute. Moving on to community and belonging. Um, I think the big one for me and also Tom in his welfare role is our LGBTQ plus inclusion campaign. Um, so as you know, we've got LGBTQ plus history month, but we're looking to run something a little bit bigger throughout the entire year um, to look after the needs of this community on campus, which is growing and, and that's great to see. And we really wanna make sure that we support their changing needs. So some of these things haven't quite been finalized yet, but some of our goals are around creating more trans spaces on campus. Um, I'm looking to run an inclusive sports day or weekend um, where we can cater for the students that don't typically fit into the male female categories when it comes to box sports um, as well as more accessible sports sessions which is continuing on from something I did last year um, and then also looking to introduce women only sessions in the gym and perhaps also LGBTQ plus sessions only in the gym so that students that don't necessarily feel comfortable using those spaces have the opportunity to do that. Really quickly um, events for all the big one is a focus on societies um, it's really easy to look after sports clubs, but societies um, don't really come um, in touch with Kent Union until term two when we've got our awards ceremony, an international showcase. So this year I'm looking to run a cultural food festival in November, um, which should be really great um, for our cultural and faith groups. And of course, there's always going to be um, varsity award ceremonies and international showcase. And then finally, for job opportunities and development. I'm working with the Careers and Employability Service to reevaluate how employability points are distributed to make sure that students can benefit a lot more from these rewards. 
Um, we're also providing more job opportunities and projects and internships in Kent Union departments, such as our marketing team, um, for students to make some extra cash on the side. Um, and Ben is also working on a couple of employability related things. So really, eventually, we're trying to do everything to get students more money, get students more engaged and active with our services, make sure that everyone has a good time and can afford to do so. Um, in terms of uh, myself, uh, my role kind of uh, speaks for itself and one of my uh, largest priorities, which is ultimately the postgraduate experience as a whole. So um, I'll be sort of dabbling in a lot of different uh, different areas, but um, uh, one of the key areas is working alongside uh, Lupe uh, to kind of over improve the overall workload and sort of difficulties that postgraduates face. Um, one of the initiatives uh, that's currently being undertaken is um, looking into how lab-based dissertations and projects are run um, for postgraduate taught students. Uh, so looking into if they have a sort of equal amount of hours uh, so one student isn't doing much much more than another um, and that they have the ability to uh, with the kind of ongoing cost of living crisis they have the ability to take up a part-time job if they need it or just to engage in some activities that aren't just permanently their entire life is dedicated to that um, academia um, so alongside that um, working a lot on um, job opportunities uh, is the kind of overall uh, category, I suppose. So that is, there'll be two, three key focuses in that um, category. The first is working towards making sure Kent Union only advertises jobs from good employers. Um, so employers that kind of fall in line with our standards and values as a union. Um, so we're not kind of advertising jobs that are gonna get graduates into difficult positions. Um, also hopefully increasing the amount of research positions um, available to sort of uh, postgraduates and also undergraduates if they wish to kind of involve themselves in that. Um, and I suppose a final point on the job opportunities front is looking into how our student staff uh, that are hired by Kent Union are treated. So making sure our kind of students uh, that are hired by Kent Union are both satisfied and secure in their jobs um, and making sure they feel appreciated. So I'll be working a lot with the commercial services within our own branch to do that. Um, and then finally, in terms of community and belonging, uh, the way I'm intending to add to that is uh, making sure both postgraduate students and mature students uh, or part-time students on campus have appropriate spaces to learn, uh, particularly um, in the summer months where they're writing their thesis, make sure there's enough space on campus um, for them to be able to have a private and quiet environment for them to be able to conduct that. Uh, also, making sure there's more postgraduate inclusive events on campus. Uh, it's something we did really, really well before COVID, um, but unfortunately, after COVID, that kind of dropped off. Uh, so gradually, there will be an increase of events this year that are just for postgraduate students, both specifically for postgraduate taught and specifically for postgraduate research. So everyone kind of has events that are scheduled to them. There'll be some ac academic and working towards kind of opportunities in the future and some that are social and more fun and give people a chance to meet their cohort. Um, and yeah, that is pretty much what I'll be working on this year, uh, amongst other stuff that I've probably forgotten. Um, but keep an eye on those if you're a postgraduate student, keep an eye on this uh, kind of Kent Union space, and hopefully there will be some things towards you. And last but most certainly not least, me. Um, I'll keep it short and sweet, um, but basically this year I'll be focusing jointly with Zed on the cost of living. I'm focusing on the kind of local level, the things at Kent Union that we have established already that we can um, use and utilise. So one thing that we've done recently is change the name of our food bank to Campus Pantry to ensure that more students um, can access this service without fear of kind of feeling that a bit of shame, a bit of guilt of using the food bank. I think the right to food is a right and everyone deserves that. And I believe that all students should have access to healthy food. And that's why we changed the name to do just that. Um, we're making use of the advice service and the Black Bullion feature that we have that shares budgeting tips and advice and tips for students on how to be savvy with their money, um, to look after their credit score. Um, etc and we'll be making videos on um, how to take care of your finances and um, tying that in with our campus pantry to um, create recipes healthy cheap recipes for students um, 
And really, those initiatives should help ease or um, ease students' minds a little. Um, we're also conducting a quality impact assessment of the cost of living and seeing how it um, impacts various students on campus. So we know our disabled students have high cost of living. They need to buy things like special equipment for their academic studies. And we're looking at how different groups are impacted and how we can tailor our support and our initiatives for these students, as well as um, ensuring that they have the bursaries, the financial support available alongside of that too. Um, so really those initiatives should help. Yesterday I was at the NUS Cost of Living Campaign Day, where we talked about um, the things we can do to involve students in the, the movement. And we, we're looking at different events and activities where we can involve students in the cost of living um, through writing letters to our MP um, and to our university minister. Um, so really the cost of living does affect everyone, but we know it also affects your mental health. So we're looking at initiatives and ways in which we can support students, mental health about finance and the worries and concerns that they might have. Um, I'm also focusing on that sense of community and belongingness. And we know that at the University of Kent um, and universities in general, that there's kind of a loneliness epidemic. So we're looking to tackle that by using the services we have at Kent Union, such as the Nightline, which is a student run service um, from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m., where students can call in if they're having any mental health difficulties. Um, we're also making use of the buddy scheme it's a wonderful scheme where students are matched with other students who have similar interests so that they can um explore the university life together with someone so they don't feel alone making these original contacts when you start early on is important to thriving at university so we'll be advertising that more um, we're looking at other ways in which we can support students and tackling loneliness um, such as different apps there was one called umi that's um, where you can kind of look for different students and, and kind of match with them and meet up with them and, and explore campus life together as well. Um, we're focusing on mental health support and awareness this year, and we're seeing a rising number of cases of eating disorders here at Kent, which is really concerning because eating disorders have the highest mortality rate of any mental illness. So we're looking at ways we can raise awareness amongst students of what eating disorders are and to be more mindful of those who might be suffering around us that we don't know of. Looking at um, calories and how we can um, ensure there's non-calorie menus on campus if students don't want to, to see that information, but also focusing on the, the support available too. Just recently collaborating with SSW on an on having hours within the nursing service to support students who who are suffering from um, eating disorders and having a drop-in clinic every week. So these sort of initiatives really will hopefully help students but build that awareness too which is really crucial and um, to be mindful of others and not to say anything that's damaging. We're also looking at faith space and how we can change and create more spaces on campus for students of faith. It's important that, that they feel supported, but also have places on campus to practice their faith. Um, so looking at areas and ways in we, which we can do that. Um, focusing a lot on EDI and working with our liberation networks. We have five. We have BAME women's faith accessibility and lgbtq plus working with them out throughout this year um, to deliver on their priorities and ensuring that they get the support that they need and amplifying their voice and mobilizing them and the movement to kind of really better the university and the experience for all students really care about edi and that that's a top priority that was voted for and we're working as a team to deliver edi for everything we do and we're really mindful of it working on history months i'm in the process of planning for black history month involving the black majority student groups that we have on campus to deliver on events that they want and giving them the support to do so and then finally um working on world mental health day how we can talk about mental health and open up a conversation we know there's cultural barriers for international students or um, for certain marginalized groups that we want to really ensure that they have the space to talk about mental health in a safe environment really uh, as well and 
that's kind of a summary, a quick summary of what I'm doing, but I'm sure there's a little few things I've missed. And, and like Ben said, if you want to know more about what we're up to, I'm sure you can see it on the Kent Union and KU officers page. So in terms of support provision for Medway, we um, are currently working with the university there uh, to create kind of some research into sport provision at the moment to see um, what needs to be brought onto campus to make sure that kind of access to sports and access to exercise and activities is more equitable across the two campuses. So keep an eye out for that. Um, make sure that you tell us exactly what you think, exactly what you need and what you want in that campus and we'll do our best to um, bring it forward. I think at the moment, you know, we have some sports teams from the hub, so you can join societies uh, through the students' unions in Medway. Um, and also you have access to Medway Park as well, which is just a short walk from campus. Um, and our plans, well, one of my ideas that I had was um, in the student accommodation in Pier Keys, the idea of potentially opening a gym there, which I think, you know, when I lived in Pier Keys, that would have been a dream to me uh, to have a gym that close. So hopefully um, from our research and our survey, if we hear from students that that is what you need and what you want, we'll work really hard to make sure that we can bring that to the campus as well. And another thing in Medway, we've also got our Give It A Go. I think it's called Give It A Go, Lupe, if you want to yes. describe that. Yeah, so essentially, um, this is where we have one of pop up events. Um, most of them tend to take place in the hub and they can range from a jumping rope session to Zumba classes. Um, so student input in that would also be really valuable. And this is something that runs on both campuses where you don't have to have any kind of commitment or membership. Most of them you can just rock up for free. Sometimes um, trips can be subsidized, so you may need to pay a little bit of money towards it. But it's just another great way to get involved with activities, meet new friends, um, and, and do something other than your degree on both campuses. There's uh, just to jump in on the give it a go there. Um, there's also some events that are on the Canterbury campus, like Thought Park trips and things that are available to Medway students. And um, you're more than welcome to come down for those large scale events as much as it would be, I guess, a shuttle bus there, but it would be still a day event that's open to everyone. Definitely. So we have a lot of plans on making sure Medway gets an equitable experience as well. So that's really exciting to kind of have three people that were have experienced Medway on the KU officer team this year, because we know what it's like. And we want to make sure that the Medway students out there now can really experience it to the fullest. Um, so we're going to be pushing for that a lot. Me and Lupe will be working really, really closely with the hub uh, in organizing some events. Our, or anyone in general wants to reach out to us. I do want to say we have our Instagram page. We have our emails. Everything is up on the Kent Union website. Um, it, there's the links in the bio of the Kent Union Instagram. So you can click that, reach out to us, and we'd be happy to help. We also have our KU offices Instagram. So if you want to just reach out to us separately, you can do that through that. Um, finally, I did want to come on to the point for the campus pantry. So the cost of living crisis is going to get really bad. It's going to keep on getting worse. And people will be choosing between, you know, heating their homes and eating, you know. So if any student ever feels like they don't have the finances to be able to buy food, the campus pantry is open to you. It is open to every single student. No student should go hungry. And it is located in the Mandela building on the Canterbury campus. So you come in, you ask someone reception, we're open nine to five Monday to Friday. Um, and we will hopefully be like, right now it's only open at three days a week. Yeah. Uh, but we'll be releasing the opening hours throughout the year and making sure we're keeping being transparent when, when the food bank and the campus pantry, sorry, when the campus pantry is open. Uh, but it is accessible to every single student regardless of where you're from so you can come up from Medway and use it as long as you're a Kent student it's open to you. Start recording now. Um, but yeah so I'll just say that bit I was gonna say about welcome events and stuff. Um, so you mentioned about some of the welcome events um, and some of the sort of communications you've had uh, between people organizing that uh, so what is there coming up uh, at the start of this term then? 
So we have loads of events coming up at the Canterbury campus and the Medway campus, but the Medway campus specifically, all the events are on our Hello Kent website. So you can kind of filter to the Medway option and see all the events in Medway, but also on the hub website. Um, there's so many, I can't even begin to list them, but I know that me and Lupe will be going to the sports day. Um, I think Lupe, do you know if there's any other events, the special ones? Yeah, I think there is a paint and kind of painted party day that's going to turn into a nighttime event. So there's going to be nighttime events every single day in the um, deep end. Um, on the Thursday, I believe there's going to be like an outdoor cinema in the evening. Uh, so that's going to be pretty exciting. And then, yeah, on the Friday, we have um, a barbecue and then a sports day, which should be really fun. It's just going to be a little bit of healthy competition between uh, Kent, Christchurch and um, Greenwich as well. So that should be pretty good. Uh, but like Zed uh, has just said, you can just check out the website and see a full list um, of all the events that we have available and see which one you like best. Oh, all of them. Yeah. I also did we mention the out. stuff happening? Oh, oh go on. Did, did we mention the stuff happening on Canterbury campus? No. Okay, great. Our website has recently been transformed. The branding is fantastic. It's really cute. Um, so if you go into kentunion.co.uk, it immediately takes you to like our Welcome to Kent branding. And there's a little section that says events. And we've got two whole weeks of stuff going on. Um, from tie-dye sessions to quizzes to parties to rodeo balls. Um, so campus is going to be extremely lively. Um, definitely make sure that you're out and about um, with an open mind to try new things um, because it's going to be a lot of fun. And if you run into us, say hi. We love speaking to new people. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. And just we mention, I don't know if we said the actual date, but for Freshers' Fairs, um, so in Medway, it's going to be the 21st of September, Wednesday, and then in Canterbury, it'll be Thursday, the 22nd and Friday, the 23rd of September. So if you're looking to see what societies are available, if you want to get some freebies, um, which are always really nice, or if you just want to see, uh, different, uh, support services from the university, everyone's going to be out and about, and you can go have chats about, um, anything really covering your experience. Oh, venue is on the Canterbury campus. It is, a, I don't know how to describe it. You can't, when you get off the shuttle bus from Medway, um, you are on the Keynes bus stop. It's a two minute walk from there. For people on the Canterbury campus, it is right next to the Mandela building where we're home, uh, but also right next to co-op, which is probably more identifiable than anything. <laughs> what kind of things do you have planned sort of going on throughout uh, the next year? That's a very big question because naturally we've got everything planned for next year. Um, so in terms of like, big key events. Um, we have our history months. So we'll have Black History Month and then Disability History Month followed shortly thereafter where we'll be putting on like specialist events um, catered towards those communities on campus. So you might see something that we did last year was arts and crafts like zine making during Black History Month, which was extremely interesting and successful or accessibility sports sessions like we did wheelchair fencing um, and hopefully those things will also be continued throughout the whole year with Lupe's Black Student Voices project and also just EDI 365, our values within Kent Union. And then other random stuff will include our give it a go. Um, we typically run things like laser tag in the venue. Collaborations with Kent Sport could include bubble football at the pavilion and um, painting. I'm sure we'll be pitching Bob Ross and wine at some point as well. Um, collaborations with student networks typically also lead to great events um, and just other societies will be throwing literally anything you could possibly think of. If it's not already being done, you could probably get in touch with us and we'll do it. Um, we've also like got international showcases, which is like a talent show or varsity where we beat Christchurch in every single sport under the sun. Um, and award ceremonies to award our volunteers. So it's it's going to look really, really good. Um, and now that, knock on wood, pretty much everything is going to be in person, right? I can't see anything possibly going wrong. Um, campus should be absolutely buzzing um, with lots of opportunities. I also want to come in really quickly to say that we will be a very transparent officer team. Uh, so we're keeping you updated on our social channels. So please do follow Kent, the Kent Unit Instagram and the KU Offices Instagram. We'll pop all the in information there, any events. 
Um, and I feel like this is a bit of a shameless plug, but we're going to be hopefully starting a little podcast too of just the officers. So if you want to keep up with us and like want to follow our journey along and really want to find out what's going on on campus, it'll be a really chill one. So you can find that out, TBC, um, in our socials. Great. Before we finish up, I just thought it might be nice for you maybe all to explain um, about your own experiences at Kent. Yeah, 100%. I'll briefly explain my <laughs> experience. I came to Kent through clearing, um, you know, from London. I was doing business and management at the Medway campus for three years. And after those three years, I decided to do a year data analytics at the Canterbury campus. So I got a feeling of both campuses. In my last year, I really got involved with Kent Union in its democratic procedures, like Kent Union Parliament, activities network, like being the chair of it, being part of societies, working at the library cafe, being on the board of trustees, all these things I got involved with because I just wanted to expand my skill set. And that led to me running for this role and getting elected as the president. So it was kind of a full circle moment for me. And for me, I'm an international student. I really didn't know anything about Kent Union when I came. Um, I was a Medway student as well for three years. And I, when I found out about the things that were happening through Zed, uh, because we were friends back then, um, I realized how much of a disadvantage I had been at because I didn't know of all the extracurriculars and all the uh, student voice things and democratic structures that I could have gotten involved with to make a change. So I decided to run and become the first Medway officer ever in the history of Kent Union. On kind of the opposite end of the scale is me. Um, I'm also international, I'm from the EU, um, and I was involved with sports. So pretty much from my first day at the university, I was involved with Kent Union because I joined the fencing club, um, decided that I wanted to be on the committee, which then helped me to see like what Kent Union is all about. I really liked it. Um, so I ran in the leadership elections. First time around, I actually wasn't successful, but I don't like not being good at things. So I did it again. Um, and here we are now. I was elected as student engagement. Um, and I enjoyed my first year so much that I reran in the elections and um, because I just love the student experience at Kent and I'm so glad that I get to improve it for all of the students that are still to come now. So for, for me, um, I loved my experience at Kent, um, especially as an undergraduate. Um, I've been here far too long. I uh, started in 2017 and just genuinely loved it. Um, and then COVID cut that somewhat short. Um, and when I was in a postgraduate, uh, post, just actually finished my postgraduate, I really, really loved it. But I felt like some of the experience had been lost somewhat um, during those pandemic years. Um, and there was an opportunity to, uh, to sort of rebuild it. Um, I also was lucky enough to have friends in a lot of different schools of academia that I knew were facing different problems with their workload and sort of their experience. And I saw an opportunity to try and change that. And so I decided to run for the position and was lucky enough to get elected. If you like anything that you heard during this little podcast, leadership elections will be happening at some point in March, I think. Um, but there's also so many other volunteering opportunities with Kent Union through like network chairs or committee members. So definitely do get involved, have your voice be heard um, and get engaged with some of our activities. Great. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for coming along and uh, letting us know more about what you've been up to and what you're going to be up to uh, as the year goes on. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for on this episode of the Kent Voices podcast. This podcast was brought to you by Student Services at the University of Kent. For more information, visit www.kent.ac.uk forward slash student services.